The process of selecting your best photos from a large set of files can take hours, and for most photographers, it's a pretty unpleasant, tedious task. That's why I'm excited to share with you Xire's AI-powered culling feature. This is brand new in Photo 2025, and with the help of Xire's culling tools, selecting your best photos is astonishingly fast. And you even have the option to configure Xire so it automatically selects and rejects photos for you based on your chosen criteria. And that just allows you to bypass culling completely. Now, the culling feature is designed to be both powerful and flexible, so you can have as much or as little control over the culling process as you want. So let me show you how this works. On the left-hand side here, you're going to go to this new tab, Culling Projects. If you click here, to get started culling a batch of photos, you're going to actually need to create what we call culling projects. So you go ahead and click this plus icon, and then here you're going to choose the folder or collection you want to cull. So you click here, you can just go through and pick what you're interested in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to select this a couple photo shoot, and then I'll hit done. Now it's important to recognize that you can only create a culling project using images you've already added to Xire. So if you can't see the folder you want to call, you may not have actually added the images in the first place. Just keep that in mind. Anyway, every culling project allows you to choose a culling profile. I'll talk about these more in a minute, but I'm going to just start with the default profile. And I'll go ahead and click Start here. Once Xire has finished its culling analysis, you'll see that it's grouped your images based on different characteristics. For instance, the people. If you click on this people collection here, you can see the people that are present in the photo shoot. In this case, we're just looking at an engagement session with two people, but if you were culling a wedding photo shoot, you might have lots of people that would be automatically categorized by face. The visual similarity group is also very cool because it lets you see photos categorized in terms of visual themes. So for instance, we can see all the images that were taken through this archway. Um, if I click in, you see a bunch of photos from this photo shoot were taken right here. Um, and then by actually holding the control and shift key, or the command and shift on a Mac, and then pressing the arrow keys, I can just quickly go through and see all of these groups of similar images, all of the images that were taken with this similar theme. I'll also mention that you, know, you can group by capture date. These were all taken on the same day, so you just have one group. There's sequences, which can be useful where you're looking at images that were taken within a small period of time of one another. So essentially bursts of photos. And, and you can actually, you can adjust the maximum time span between photos right here. Anyways, I want to mention that you have here a selection bin and then a, re a recycle bin or a reject bin based on which images have been given accept or reject flags. And it's worth mentioning that you can even see images that haven't been assigned to any categories. There aren't any here. But just in case you want to make sure that all of your images uh, appear somewhere in one of these groups, you can check this unassigned option. Now, having your images grouped this way will automatically speed up the culling process because you can just quickly look at all the groups of, say, visually similar images. And then you can just flag the best one or two from each group for editing or to send to a client or to post on social media or to print or whatever. Like I could go through here and maybe I say, okay, I like this image. I also, I like this one, but maybe I don't, I don't, I don't really like close up ones. So I'm going to reject that, reject this. And then I use that shortcut. A control shift or command shift shortcut, I'm going to go through the next one. And I say, yep, that's a good one. Maybe I say, 
I also like this one. And then I can just keep going through. And when I flag these images, they're going to appear here in the selection set. You can see more have appeared because I flagged some. And that just makes these images especially easy to access. Um, I could even in the selection bin right click and I say convert to collection or add to collection so that I have all these images that I liked and I just put them together in a specific collection that I can then access later. And I also want to mention here what's really, really cool is that I can sort each of these groups by my preferred criteria. So if we come back to visual similarity here, um, if I go in here, I can say that I want to quickly see the best shots by sorting up here by aesthetics. So Xire's Aesthetics AI feature is going to, to uh, have applied aesthetic scores to each image, and then the program will sort based on those. So I see the most aesthetic images first. I can also choose this Further Attributes tab, which can be very cool for choosing specific attributes that I want to sort by. So maybe I want to see the image that has the sharpest eyes or the sharpest faces. Um, I can just click these and then the, these collections will automatically be ordered according to that attribute where the sharpest come first and then the decreasing sharpness, the, the blurrier images come last. So say I choose eye sharpness from this batch, and then I'm going to say eyes open as well. So I want to see images that have combined both sharpness on the eyes and then eyes open. And then I get top result, a very nice image. And as you can see, the face is sharp, but if you want to actually check face sharpness, if you say, I, I'm not actually sure, well, the color of this box around the face, the green color, indicates that it is indeed sharp, whereas an orange or a red box would indicate poor sharpness. And I can also, by the way, hold the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac, and then if I press an arrow key, it's going to just quickly zoom in so I can check face sharpness. I mean, this is at 223%. So you're starting to see some blurriness just because uh, it's just zoomed in so far. But in general, the face sharpness is pretty good here, as you can tell. And that allows you to just say, okay, this is a good shot from a sharpness perspective. And one more thing that I want to talk about here, which I mentioned at the beginning, is the culling profiles feature. So if I come back here to this main view, when you start a culling project, you choose the culling profile that you want Xire to use. And that allows you to configure different groups. So like I had those visual similarity groups, capture date, people groups, that sort of thing. I can choose which groups I want Xire to use. And I can even tell Xire to automatically select and reject certain photos based on specific criteria. So here you can see the calling profiles. I had chosen default, but I can come down here to manage profiles. And in addition to these existing profiles that Xire has built in for specific situations, I can add my own profiles or I can import other profiles. But so say that I want to add my own calling profile. I've added one personal profile here, but let's do another personal profile. Too. And then once I've named it, I can go through these different tabs and choose how I actually want my culling profile to work. So for instance, I can tell Xire to automatically reject blurry photos, or to automatically reject overexposed and underexposed photos, or to automatically reject photos in which all the eyes are closed. I can also come in here. I want different categories for grouping. Maybe I don't think grouping by people for my particular photo shoot is useful. So I might turn that off. And I want this profile, say I want this profile to apply to landscape photos. I know I'm going to use it for culling my landscape photo shoots. So no use in grouping by people. I turn that off. 
I can group by content where I select keywords if I wanted to and then group based on those. I think the visual similarity for a landscape photographer is really quite useful. And so maybe I keep that on and I can choose do I want to compare based on content or color when it comes to actually grouping in terms of visual similarity. I can change the strictness of Xire's uh, AI analysis to say, do I want images to be very, very visually similar to be grouped together? Or can they be can they be looser? I can also use this smart selection tab to tell Xire to automatically select the best photos from each group based on my own preferred attributes. So I'd come up, I'd say enable smart selection. If I want Xire to apply a flag to the single image in each visually similar group that has the best eye sharpness, I'd come here, I'd say, I want visual similarity. And then I'm going to come and select here, eye sharpness. I want to make sure I only want one image from each group selected, each visually similar group. So I'm going to send that to one. And I just hit save. And from here, I can choose to use the profile. Hopefully, you can now see just how powerful these culling features in XIR actually are and how you can use them to save so much time when going through your photos for clients or for social media or just for your own personal use. XIR's culling tools offer a ton of flexibility and you can adjust them to give you the results that work for you. So I encourage you to head into Xire, start up a culling project, and just play around. See how much time you can save when going through hundreds or thousands of images.